Ralph here from Wood Academy TV. Now you guys know I love doing my jigs and fixtures and the zero play guide bar from Microjig is one of my favorite tools. But one of the questions I get a lot is how do I figure out exactly where to put the zero play underneath whatever sled I'm building? So in this video we're going to go through a couple of the basic sled setups and talk about how you can get your zero plays set accurately so that they run true and your sled works the way you want. The mounting holes for the zero play are four inches apart. So that makes it pretty easy as far as spacing the holes on your part. Now this sled is incredibly simple. It just needed the three holes in the center of a piece of wood. Nothing really to set up here. But it gets a little more complicated if you want to put two zero play guide bars, one in each miter slot. So let's look at that. So if we want to build a crosscut sled that spans both miter slots, we're going to use a larger piece of plywood. And the simple way to set this up is to position it so that your blade is going to be right about in the middle of the jig where you want it. Bring the rip fence over and square it up. This way I know that the jig, or at least the base of my jig, is parallel to my blade along the axis of travel because everything's been set up properly to begin with. Next, I'm just going to visually mark the center line of each miter slot at the front and back. Don't have to get crazy here. Don't need hyper precise measurements. Just lay it out visually the best you can. Now we're going to strike a line front to back, connecting those two marks that I made. Those represent the center line of my miter slots on the board. Now, understand these aren't centered on the board because on my saw it's about five and a half from here to here and about four and a half to the other miter slot. So these are not going to be running proportional. They're going to be offset compared to the blade if everything's set up properly. And most saws are like this. So one of the things I get asked a lot is that the zero play is only about nine, nine and a half inches long. So on a wide sled, where do I put them? Well, I prefer to stagger them front and rear on each side. And the reason being, and it doesn't really matter how wide the sled is, the reason being that if they're staggered, the sled as it's being used will get maximum coverage. If I have to go beyond the back, one miter bar will still be fully engaged with the miter slot. If I come all the way this way, I've still got one fully engaged with the miter slot. The other one will always be partially engaged, but this gives me a really stable fit and in reality, I'm getting the full width effect here. So at this point, I'm just going to start back by maybe an inch and a half for the first hole. And then it's just four inches on center to the next two. So we're going to go to five and a half and then nine and a half. And those will line up. It doesn't matter whether your measurements are perfectly set. And I'll explain why in just a second. The difficulty with a sled like this is we not only need three holes on each side that have to be four inches apart to line up the zero play mounting points, but the two zero plays have to be exactly the right distance apart to be able to slide together within two separate miter slots without binding. That is impossible to do at a drill press to get all those accurate enough. And it's pretty much virtually impossible even at a CNC without a lot of trial and error. But we don't have to go through that. We're going to create half inch counter bores for the screw and the, the washer. 
and then quarter inch through holes to finish off. And what that gives us is about a 32nd of play all the way around each of the screws. That's going to allow us to adjust everything in place. We begin by drilling the counter bores, half inch diameter, and all but about a quarter of an inch through your uh, base material. In this case, I'm going a half an inch deep. You want to try and get these as close as possible to the actual four inches on center. We've got some room to play, but there's no point in using it up when you don't have to. We might want it later. So try and drill these as accurately as possible. Now we're just going to run back through the same holes, but using a quarter inch bit to finish the through part. The good news is, since I used a Forstner to begin with, I can use the center divot from the drill bit to guide my quarter inch bit. So everything will be accurate. And these Fish brand bits that I'm using out of Germany, F-I-S-C-H, are really terrific. You can see that the holes that I drilled, the counter bores, are absolutely dead clean. Not only at the surface, but all the way down through. And I've really, really come to like these bits. As you can see, the holes are even clean on the back side where the bit came through. Now the zero plays are mounted to the... Now I've secured the zero plays to the board. Now I've secured the zero plays to the underside of my jig board, but as you can see, there's a pretty fair amount of play here. And that's on purpose. We need that to be able to line everything up. Now I can set the zero plays into the miter slots, bring the rip fence back over, square it up, try to center everything the best I can. Now the two zero plays can be tightened in place making sure that my jig is still tight to my rip fence as I do this. Once these six screws are in place, everything should be set. The jig moves very smoothly back and forth. That's good. And there's zero play side to side. This is exactly what I want, and it was easy to do because the play built into the system. Now the process is only a little different if you want a sled that's going to be on one side of the blade only. In this case, I'm going to bring this rip fence over until it just covers the blade if I want the edge of the jig to ride where the blade is. I can also cut that edge off using the blade by just moving the fence a little bit further back, which will shave that edge. But this is going to be close enough for now. Then once again, we mark the center line front and back of the miter gauge just visually. Strike the line, same as before. We're just doing one instead of two here. Then I can drill the holes, mount the zero play, get it set into position, and once again square it up with the fence, and that's going to position my jig exactly the way I want it to. I always lay out the zero play locations first on any jig I'm building. And that's because I don't want anything that I'm doing with the jig to interfere with these holes. So for example, if I were going to put a really wide, heavy duty piece of hardwood back here for a fence, I might move these three holes. I might want them a little bit farther forward. So one of them is not underneath the fence. That would be an issue. Now, if your sled is going to have details in it like this one does, 
This has dovetail grooves in it. It's a mini version of the 360 sled plan that Microjig has on their website. The 360 sled is great for big saws like mine. It's 16 wide by 22 long, but it, that size doesn't really work very well on job site saws, for example. And so this mini one is small enough to work on a job site saw, but has all the features of the main 360 sled. But because I've changed the layout and because the miter slot on my saw here may not be the same distance as the miter, saw, miter slot on a job site saw, by laying out the zero play holes first and then laying out where the dovetails are going to go, I can guarantee that I'm not going to end up with a hole in the middle of a dovetail, which is really what I don't want. So now you know the basic steps that will allow you to set up successful sleds and jigs for your table saw. Always lay out your guide bars first, that way they won't interfere with anything else you're doing. And using the rip fence to help you keep everything square and aligned is a big step as well.